Well, the EU and UK are set for emergency talks after the publication of a controversial bill that critics say would allow UK ministers to override parts of the Brexit withdrawal agreement and, in fact, break international law. But the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, says the bill needs to pass to protect Northern Ireland. Let's get more on what all this means. I'm joined by Jill Rutter, a senior researcher at the UK in a Changing Europe initiative at King's College London. Jill, lovely to talk to you again. It's been ages and Brexit's almost become a forgotten word during the COVID crisis. But it's back front and centre. What's prompted the emergency talks? The emergency talks are a result of the government yesterday published a new piece of legislation called the Internal Market Bill, which basically did two things. Most of it was about uh, actually what rules do we run the economies of England, Scotland and Wales by after we leave the EU. We lose that EU framework we've been operating under, so we've had to discover this odd thing called the UK internal market. But we know that the UK signed up to this special deal on Northern Ireland as part of its withdrawal agreement. And what the government's doing there is saying, well, if we don't agree some things with the EU by the end of the year, we don't like the defaults that are set out in that withdrawal agreement we signed up to. So actually, we're going to impose our own interpretation of that, uh, even if they run counter to those obligations. They set out what those are, which is about things like do people in Northern Ireland have to fill out uh, paperwork when they send goods over to Great Britain? Do we have to charge tariffs, say, on stuff that's going into supermarkets in Northern Ireland, even if it's not going to go into the Republic of Ireland? So it's quite complicated stuff, but it's turned into a mega political row. Yes, and it's threatening the deal with the EU. And also Nancy Pelosi has warned that there'll be no US-UK trade deal if they renege on this agreement. Um, is that going to play into the decision making? It may play into the decision making. As you say, it's provoked the EU. The government must have known it was doing that. But it's not just the uh, opposition that has uh, and critics of the government that have said this is breaking international obligations. The government said it itself and it says it on the face of the bill, which is pretty, uh, pretty strange stuff. Uh, but yes, I think that is a big risk, particularly if there's a change of US administration. But given the uh, importance of the Irish American caucus in Congress and Congress's role in passing trade deals, that must be very worrying for the government. Because while this government has said it's, you know, it's actually quite relaxed about no deal with the EU, Prime Minister said earlier this week when he set a deadline for the talks that that would be a good outcome. Uh, it's one of its big prizes it wants to deliver through Brexit is a trade deal with the US, even though economically that's loads less significant than the deal with the EU. But it is one of the eyes on the prize. So if it's getting in the way of that, it's very difficult. And, you know, so messing with Ireland is always risky in the US. Yeah. He's also bringing in new COVID restrictions again and his approval ratings are falling. This is the Prime Minister I'm talking of. He had been in such a strong position. What is impacting his his uh, approval at the moment? I think the real problem for the prime minister, and you start you've seen this sort of drifting down over the summer, has just been the sense that uh, the government isn't very good at what it's doing. So I think the real big charge, and this is a charge being made repeatedly by the Labour Party, is it's not that it's doing the wrong things, it's just not doing them very well. So it's a big charge of incompetence. Uh, and I think that's what's doing for the Prime Minister. So he's seen his ratings drifting down. The interesting thing is he's also facing increasing criticism from his back benches. The one thing they seem relatively united on, though, is Brexit. That's the sort of area where they agree with him. A lot of unhappiness, uh, particularly today in the Conservative press, about the further lockdown restrictions. People saying he's uh, going too far, too nannying, uh, too panicky about COVID coming back. So, uh, so that's quite a difficult topic for him. Indeed. Jill, nice to talk to you. Thanks for joining us. You're welcome.